as part of our guest series on Create a Beautiful World and the Moon Sensei channel, I'd like to introduce a friend of mine, Richard Strozzi Heckler. Richard and I came up through the ranks together. We started around the same time, studied under the same teacher up through our first few dawn ranks. Richard is he's a very special person, very exceptional in his way, incredible athlete coming in, long meditation practice, deep study with many teachers in varied disciplines. We studied a number of martial arts together. I can't tell you what a, an important person he is to me, but he's probably also the best spokesperson for the art of Aikido at this point. He's worked with the military. Richard's approach is, it's not only unique in its way, but it's maybe one of the most sincere devotional approaches to Aikido I know. And it really is a, a pleasure to introduce Richard Strozzi Heckler to you. His stories are wonderful and I hope you enjoy your time with him. Richard. Maybe I'll start off with, you know, I have a kind of a semi joke that, you know, you take a plane flight and on the outbound, uh, you know, you're sitting next to somebody and it gets around to what do you do? And if I say something like, um, well, I, 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 I study martial arts and I teach martial arts and the martial art is called Aikido. And I can just see really what kind of gets in their, their picture immediately is uh, Bruce Lee. And uh, often some people have even jokingly said to me, oh, I better watch how I am around you. And, you know, uh, that kind of frames the story around Aikido, I think, because um, in my experience that um, it is a martial art, you know, Master Washiba right down this jujitsu line. And um, it's, it's taught as a self-defense art. Um, and I think what people see is these wrists turning and people th getting thrown down. And then if they see beyond that, like I can do that to somebody, I think that they touch into, which touched me for the very first time I saw it, which was in Hanapepe, Kauai, which you know, where I started. And, um, you know, it was like beauty. It was like, the poet John Keats said, truth is beauty and beauty is truth. And uh, never once did I go, I can use this on somebody. It was more like, um, I want to be used by this. Whatever it is that they're doing, I want to be used by it. Uh, you know, just the, what would I say, the, the beauty, the truth, the grace, and also the, the underlying promise of power, or imminent, the imminency of, of some kind of power. And um, inside of that, I, I don't think that outside of certain circles, you're, you're in that circle with me, that it's really seen that way. You know, it's seen as a um, do this, do that. And I think I came into it with a certain kind of athleticism where I could look at the technique and I wasn't so confused about just doing it next. I'm not saying I was a master at it, but I have enough body sense to go, oh, left foot, right foot. And I went, it's either going to go up or down, left or right or front and back. And, um, yeah. and uh, that, that was great. But um, what was really always pulled into me, and, and it was ignited by, I, I had really great teachers that I bow into. And without those teachers opening these certain doors, you know, um, Tsugisa Tomi Sensei, Robert Nago Sensei, Frank Duran Sensei, a whole host of, host of other people. And... Uh, like those are like formal teachers, but um, these ongoing conversations with you. And, you know, I really come, Moon, to, to see, I think it's a, it's a, I think it's an evolutionary art. And when I look at what we're doing is that we're actually building a different genetic code. Now, that's a big declaration here, but, um, you know, um, we're a bird down in the South America jungle, and there's all these great nuts that you can eat. Um, but they're very, uh, I have just a small beak, but I keep wanting to get those nuts. So over time, I grow a big beak. So then I can uh, connect with the land in a particular way. And, you know, my, my, my sense, or at least, at least what I'm, I'm committed to is that, you know, are we, are we changing our responses to any kind of perceived or real pressures from running away or fighting or disassociating or freezing to um, we call it in our art blending, masubi, tying in. And I think that at some deep level, and I think you have an organization with this name, it's called uh, Listening. 
And instead of all that, how do I create a deep, deeper listening? And the promise of that listening, I think in Aikido, as well as all the other uh, traditions, contemplative, spiritual, mystical traditions, what have you, um, that it leads to a place that deep, deep listening leads to a direct experience that uh, there, um, there, there's not a dualism. There, there's, there's not a, there really isn't this separation. There really is this connection, this big web that we, we live in. And uh, if we attune to that web uh, or that Aiki or that, that universal energy, um, is it possible to bring forward a world in which um, people are, uh, they have alternatives uh, to violence? Um, and, um, and, and I would like to say here is that I don't say conflict. I think, I think actually the absence of conflict is violence. So everybody's wanting to, let's, let's resolve conflict. It's like, no, this is the push and pull. And inside of that, um, something else gets generated. And so for me, the, the, we, we practice the blending, the moving, listening deeply in here. And is that changing this um, genetic code in us? And can it possibly change the genetic code of the world or the whole, of the whole community? And um, that's what I'm betting on.